Snipers, you have to see what's happening to the Bitcoin price this Saturday as I'm back on the computer. I've got a new setup. So we're going to start doing live streams here on the Snipers channel. And I wanted to really address what I've been monitoring here for Bitcoin with yesterday's candle low at 41,938, literally $20 shy of our extremely important support level of 41,950. We have yet to come and breach this level. We're going to look at some micro time frames. And just like we predicted yesterday, we are sticking towards this 50 day moving average. We're not seeing price action move too far away from it. And that's a very positive thing to assume that we could potentially have an inverse head and shoulder pattern forming where we could see continued momentum to the upside as the week opens and traditional markets start to see liquidity flow into them. We know the 200 and the 100 day moving average at 49,700 right now is an extremely important goal that the bulls have to conquer because that not only puts us above the major resistance of this head and shoulder neckline, but it invalidates the bearish pattern and it doesn't assume that Bitcoin is going to see any further lows. And so right now we are testing the most important level here at 41,950. And therefore, we can go into the micro time frames and talk about what's happening. There aren't too many on chain metrics to cover today, other than the fact that a lot of Ethereum came on exchanges. That's something to note. We're going to talk about altcoins in just a second. But first, I want you guys to just kind of pay attention here at 41,950 Bitcoin right now is taking advantage of the weekend as traditional markets are closed. The S&P 500 closed below its 200 day moving average. You know, a lot of people are talking about the Russia and Ukraine news. Canada is going crazy with the mandates. And so there's a lot of news and fundamentals and distractions out there. But here on the Cypress channel, we like to keep everything black and white. And the fact of the matter is I expected Bitcoin to stay above 41,950 through this weekend because of the fact that the S&P 500 has only formed a higher low so far. It hasn't seen a lower low form. It hasn't breached its recent lows. And so we could still make the case that the S&P 500 is trying to form a higher low to see continued upside. We know there's a lot of correlation with the S&P 500 and Bitcoin. And so with Bitcoin sitting at 41,950, why is this level extremely important? Because if we break below it, it opens up the range to a support of 38,000 US dollars where we have the monthly open and the previous weekly open, which is going to change tomorrow. I might actually do a live stream tomorrow since it's Sunday as futures markets open so we can see how liquidity is reacting. But remember this institutional time frame that we've been monitoring here at the six hour. We saw this institutional volume come in and this was the third piece of institutional volume that has come in since Bitcoin has crossed below 34,788. You can see it came in once below 35,000 and then it came a second time around 38,000. And then the third time it came in, but Bitcoin didn't see upside. It actually saw downside. And that's exactly what we predicted two days ago because I told you guys I didn't trust this third piece of institutional volume because of the fact that when we looked at Ethereum to the US dollar pairing, it correlated for the first two times that Bitcoin saw institutional volume where it saw institutional buy volume. But that third time where Bitcoin was green, Ethereum sold off. So it was actually institutional sell pressure that came in for Ethereum. So we only saw it twice with Ethereum. And then that last one was a sell candle versus with Bitcoin. That last one was a buy candle. And that was our first indicator that altcoins were going to start selling off. Now, everyone's talking about altcoin selling off. Every big channel is saying that altcoin season, even the altcoin channels that have altcoins in their name, I'm not going to name anybody, is now saying that there could be some potential downside in the coming weeks and months for altcoins. But that's no surprise for us here that have been tuned into the Snipers channel. So remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you all support this content and hit that notification bell to ensure you get all of our updates as soon as they come out. So altcoin season potentially slowing down Does that mean that we're going to see complete downside in the market? Not necessarily in the past. We've seen Bitcoin dominance move to the upside and not see too much downside in the overall market. What it really means is what we may see is sideways price action. And when there's sideways price action, of course, that's going to affect altcoins in a certain way. And when altcoins are coming down in dominance with sideways price action, we'll tend to see more downside moves 
and more intense downside with altcoins if Bitcoin does start to fall down. But if Bitcoin has bottomed out at 33,000, do we have too much to worry about right now just because the altcoin dominance chart is starting to break down? I don't think that we need to really keep that much of a importance on the altcoin dominance chart and the Bitcoin dominance chart. In 2018, it really mattered because there wasn't the metaverse, there wasn't NFTs the way there are now, there wasn't GameFi the way that Axie Infinity has taken over that market. And so there's a lot of developments in this new rally that weren't in place in 2018 where it mattered a lot because we could have really have considered most altcoins in 2018, you know, SHIT coins. Uh, but there were always those specific cases like Chainlink in 2018 that did extremely well because there were still use case. And I think that the same way in 2021 that we saw Axie Infinity and we saw Sandbox and a lot of these up and coming projects do well despite some bearish price action with Bitcoin and Bitcoin not necessarily breaching its $64,000 high. I think we can continue to see that even if altcoins dominance is coming down. And I think that one confirmation of that opinion is the fact that Bitcoin dominance has decoupled from the DXY. So we have to treat it differently, right? And so if it's not following the same trend that it did in 2018, why do we have to take as much of uh, important consideration to it this time around when it's already proven that it's wanting to decouple away from one major asset, which is the strength of the US dollar? then that could also assume that fundamentally sound coins are still going to do well. So I wouldn't worry too much about the altcoins dominance and the Bitcoin dominance. What really matters is what altcoins are we looking at and trading and choosing because the ones that are fundamentally sound could always do well despite sideways price action. And so I still believe that we could have bottomed here at 33,000. We were the first ones to call this major support level and this was the second point of contact from a channel that had a higher high form at 69,000 US dollars. And the way that I drew this channel out was I took the initial high at 64,000, I took the second high at 69,000, and I found confluence with this low, and that was where we started to target 33,000's potential bottom for this downside move, and we called that out as soon as we broke the midpoint of the channel, and so, you know, for those that have been tuned to the Sniper's channel, we've been extremely accurate with our prices because of this specific parallel channel. And I talked about this yesterday. I didn't really show it too much on the charts, but the problem with breaking below 41,950 is it puts 40,000 on the table. And 40,000 is going to be the max downside that I'd like to see if we want to assume Bitcoin has bottomed out here. And this might be a little bit of a bearish opinion, but I'm always addressing the bulls and the bears on the Sniper's channel. If we breach below 40,000, I've already said this, I believe that 38,000 isn't going to hold, 34,788 isn't going to hold, and this channel support isn't going to hold, and that we're actually going to see price action break below the channel, possibly towards the target of around 23,795 to 25,880, and that's why 40,000 is extremely important right now. And the way that I'm predicting this is by just assuming that because we came and tested 33,000 already in this channel support, the second retest is never going to be the most probable support level. Because I talked about this yesterday, when we tested 33,000, we took our long position here on the first test. If you're somebody that is going to have to wait for the second test, of course, on micro time frames, you want to wait for confirmation. That's why the hourly and four hour are so important. But on a daily time frame, on a weekly time frame, if we come back to test 33,000 in this zone below 38,000, I mean, now we're really playing with fire because the markets love to do the opposite of what people expect. So where everyone's expecting support here again, it will most likely break. And so that's why I believe 40,000 is so significant. If we breach below 41,950, what we really want to see is only just a wick towards 40,000. We don't want to see too much more than that. We don't want to see too much sell pressure for sure, too much sell volume. And so that's what I'm monitoring to the downside scenario. But remember that lumber chart that I showed you guys yesterday 
When Lumber initially saw its death cross and then it bottomed out about 15 days after, just like Bitcoin did when it saw its death cross, at least thus far, it then moved to its 50 day moving average, had a cup of coffee, formed a bullish flag before seeing a continuation move to the upside. And I think that this right now is the most probable scenario. And that's why we're keeping 40,000 right now as the most downside that we could see to assume that we're not going to breach back below this low here at 33,000. Actually, it was a CME gap that we filled at 32,930. And so I've pretty much emphasized this here for Bitcoin. I do want to talk about several other revolving parts that I don't usually talk about on the weekend, like gold. And the reason I want to talk about gold is because gold has been a very, very slow asset over the last few months. Uh, as a matter of fact, over the last decade, people who have invested in gold have not seen the type of returns that you'd see with maybe investing in Bitcoin or other tech sectors. And so gold, even in 2011, was sitting at the range that it's currently at around the $1,800 level. But we are starting to break out. And so the reason I consider this a breakout is you can see the current price action is starting to breach all major resistance levels. And typically when you're starting to break out, it will be you know a slow breakout at first before we start to see increased momentum. And so there's an expectation, I believe, that gold will cross back above the 2000 US dollar level here very soon. And if that happens, this is real institutional fear because the same way that Bitcoin dominance is starting to move up in the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin is an $800 billion asset right now in total market cap. The crypto market in general is less than $2 trillion. Gold is around $11 trillion market, right? And so, you know, Bitcoin being almost one-tenth of that, we have to consider the fact that if gold starts to move up, this is actually showing real fear in the more macro environment when it comes to economics. And so we're going to want to monitor gold right now. I think that it's time to start monitoring gold. Uh, if we were to take this resistance level, no matter which way you draw it, we're starting to break out. And so it's, it's, it's been slowly trying to move up. You can see this curvature with its price. Uh, and so I think that especially with the fundamentals, the tension that we're seeing overseas, at least if you're in the United States, uh, that it would make sense right now for gold to move back above 2000 US dollars. But if that's the case, that does show some fear in traditional markets for the more medium to long term. And with the S&P 500 right now, the reason I don't believe that Bitcoin is going to see any further lows right now, at least until we see futures markets open, is because once again, we've only formed a higher low so far. And so we are just below this 200 day moving average. But just check out what happened here when we came and tested this 100 day moving average. We tested it once. We came just below it before seeing further upside and new all time highs for the S&P 500. So if we were to see something similar here, we want to start moving up here as we start to see futures markets open. We don't want to see more red in the S&P 500. It is at its max downside if we don't want to assume a lower low to form here. And so this scenario could certainly bring Bitcoin down below 40,000 US dollars and then breach 34,788 if the S&P 500 starts to move down. I'd be interested to see on the weekly chart how that would look. So that would most likely target the 100 week moving average where right now we're currently sitting at the 50 week moving average. You can see these two weekly candles rejected the 20 week moving average. And so if we see this move for the S&P 500, that's the big concern for Bitcoin. I think that that would bottom Bitcoin out because that puts the S&P 500 in range to actually even potentially test the 200 week moving average. And so that would be most likely the last downside move that we'd see before some price action to the upside. We know the 200 week moving average has always been in historical terms the best place to dollar cost average into assets. It's always been the place where you can see a black swan event and maximum fear in the market and an asset will bottom out around that 200 week moving average. So um, so breaking below right now could be a major dip for all markets, but we want to monitor that. There's no confirmation of it yet. Uh, and and on chain metrics, a lot of on chain analysis is determining that Bitcoin has potentially bottomed out here. Uh, and there's no reason why we couldn't come up to test this midpoint of the range around 50,000 again, test the 200 and 100 day moving average, not come back below 38,000. I think this is still highly probable. 
I'm not too concerned about the environment outside of Bitcoin right now. I know interest rates might start to come up, but as we know, last week we covered the reaction of markets with interest rates and with a 50 point hike, that's just 0.5%. You know, in 2019, we were at 2.5%. It doesn't necessarily affect inflation as much as people are saying it's going to affect inflation. I think that the way that Jerome Powell in the Federal Reserve is starting to release you know, uh, Fed minutes and he's not using the word transitory anymore tells us that, you know, this isn't transitory inflation and that companies are going to have to adapt, raise wages, and the inflation is real and it's here to most likely stay. And if we do see a pullback with inflation, it's probably going to be very minimal. It's not going to be what we saw pre-2020. And so I think that that's very clear. Um, I don't believe Bitcoin will breach back below 20,000 US dollars, its previous all time high. I think we've entered a new matrix with this rally, with the amount of money the feds have printed. You know, the max downside, if we breach below 40,000, is a potential scenario down to this 24 to $25,000 level. And with that being said, I think that's most of what I wanted to cover today. If we break above 44,800 once again, hourly and four hour candles is the confirmation we need to assume 49,700 is on the table. And we'll be monitoring that as we always do. And for those in the Discord, we have taken some short positions over the last few hours. But remember, those are positions that we want to stay in for a very short amount of time because when you're short any market, any asset, you have unlimited downside potential. Shorts are meant to be in and out of. You don't want to hold long-term positions, especially if they're on margin when it comes to shorts, especially a bullish asset like Bitcoin or any, you know, anything in the cryptocurrency market with the amount of volatility we see. We want to take advantage of uh, shorts with just the short-term volatility. And with that being said, we'll, we'll monitor this altcoin chart that factors in everything outside of Ethereum. Uh, it is testing this major support level for a sixth time. And I told you guys, when you come and you knock on a door for a sixth time, the likelihood that this door is going to want to open is very high. And so someone's going to probably answer this door. If we see this happen, then there's going to be a side where altcoins are not going to do well against Bitcoin. And what we have to pay attention to is the sideways price action Bitcoin is seeing because on the downside with that sideways price action is where altcoins can be affected the most. Uh, that, that, that doesn't mean we're not going to see altcoins form new highs that are fundamentally sound. And so I think that's very important to keep in mind. Um, and then Bitcoin dominance coming towards our target right now of 44% where it comes back to the midpoint of this range. And if you guys are wondering what the target is for Bitcoin dominance, Bitcoin dominance, when it starts to break out, it loves to stay at its 200 week moving average. And so that's what I call homeostasis for Bitcoin dominance. Notice how 2017, 18 rally and moved all the way towards the 200 week moving average and it stayed there. So that would be right around the 57% dominance level right now. And so that could be the more macro target as we start to see this move to the upside for Bitcoin dominance. But as I mentioned from the start of this video, let's not put too much consideration in the dominance charts. I think they mattered a lot more in 2018 than they do matter uh, in, in this cycle, uh, as long as you're in the fundamentally sound coins, which is what matters. And with that being said, remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you guys appreciate this style of content, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. We'll start doing some live streams that I have this new setup. And until next time, snipers.